Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we'll be talking about some of our artwork and the style that we're going for in our comics, as well as some projects that we'll be working on both this year and the coming year. Before we start though, be sure to subscribe to our channel to, for our channel to grow. Share with your friends to help us grow and reach more people. We appreciate everyone that watches our videos, and if you like our videos, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and ring that bell icon to be notified when we post another video. So, so let's, let's begin. begin. So, um, some of the things that we've been working on actually are mostly just kind of fleshing out the design of our characters. We want them to look iconic. We wanted to reflect some of that older generation stuff from not really older, if anything, it's kind of mid, mid tier level. The older comic books we would, we would say are a bit more, um, it's not really our style, but our style is more like mid, mid nineties or late nineties to, or to mid two thousands. And, we just like to have this style that is more intense on the, on the blacks and the black hues of the coloring, the shading. We want to make sure that it has a richness to the colors. However, we also want to have, I, every character needs to have an original design. Like, for, for Manny, he actually designed Velocity in a way that's more iconic. But what was your inspiration when you were creating some of your characters, like Velocity or what, what other character? What character would you prefer to talk about? Um, well, when it came to the inspiration for the Velocity outfit, my original, uh, inspiration for it was, uh, oh. watching Invincible, the, that, that show, over and over and over again. I kept on just hearing, um, uh, uh, Mark Hamill's voice saying, Iconic! And I had that in my head over, just playing over and over. And, and so I came up with a design for Velocity that would match his character be original completely and there we go I, it came to it came to my head and came up with the concept i mean honestly the design for me it was i mean when i thought when i saw it it was just perfect and trying to adapt it to a comic book style because my brother's still learning how to draw so i wanted to make sure that he looked as comic book looking as possible mind you i'm not a perfect artist i'm still learning as i go but the overall design is honestly perfect, and it works for what we're hoping to create in our coming comic book series. We have a few comic book series coming out soon. They're all a few of them are going to be they're going to start off free. But as we develop our stories and build an audience, we're hoping to eventually start selling them and sell physical copies as well. We don't want to just keep it digital. We want to create actual art that you can hold in your hands. I mean, we all know that the the feel of a comic book in your hands cannot be replaced by just reading a digital comic. It just, it's not the same. It isn't. Not at all. I mean, the smell of the paper, the feel in your your hands. I mean, there's a reason why ASMR videos do so well. And it's not just this. It's not just the watching someone eat or watching someone do something. It's the fact that you can hear the sound, the texture. You can almost smell the food. It's what, real. It's real. There's a it's the, it's the sensations, and and we want to do that even with the artwork that we create. We want the whenever you're looking at it, we want you to feel the nostalgia of some of the older comics from back in the day, and before all the craziness online took over. And you know, although we still prefer digital art to a degree, we appreciate having to or having the ability to create characters and comic books that reflect the nostalgia of the days of old and the days of our own childhood mostly it's not really the days of old it's the days of our childhood it's what we're trying to create and kind of bring that nostalgia back into this time frame in a way without without pandering to that nostalgia we just want to create artwork that we like things that we enjoy that we know others will like too or we hope at least <laughs> but um i'd say some of the things that we've created created like uh, Sparrow, when you were creating that character, Manny, uh, what what really was your idea for its design? Because I mean, most sparrows are kind of like a brown color and white, but this character has more yellows and such. What what kind of design were you did you have in mind? I was thinking of um, mainly tactical. Her design was supposed to be very tactical because she was a cop, so naturally she wasn't thinking all superhero. I'm going to wear some tights. I'm going to be a superhero and pose on top of this building. It's more like, um, you know, just tactical. She had to strategically think about what she would wear. And 
generally after that, it's just what would be more comfortable to wear, what would be uh, useful to wear. Easier to maneuver in, I'd easier, imagine. Easier to maneuver in, more ad, uh, to promote agility, so that way she can jump from rooftop to rooftop and over objects that are in her way, and to vault over criminals that are also in our way. So naturally, we kind of went back to the spandexy look. Yeah, eventually, went to, eventually went back to the spandexy look. And when we were designing certain characters, I remember when I was designing Nexus, I used to put a cape on him. He had a cape for so long. That's because Theo loves Superman. Yes, he always loves Superman. But ultimately, we chose a character. We chose a design, or when I designed his new look, that was going to be more original. He started to take on a look that was more reflective of who he is as a character. He's trying to be a symbol of hope. Bright colors, light, but also very simplistic. So he's just blue and white. His characters are just his character colors are blue and white. I gave him green eyes. But he does have some similarities in appearance to Superman. But with that cape gone and the obviously you can't really make anything brand new. It's not cap no one's capable of doing that today because of the fact that Every design has already been done. Every look, as long as you can create something that is not a copycat, is unique in story, is unique in to some degree in personality and appearance. Like there, there's, you can do some unique features, and that's why we, I gave him a beard because, well, personally, I'm growing a beard and beards just look cool. I mean, honestly, you just can't. I mean, I gave him a really noble beard. He just looks nice. And he's muscular, thick, but he's not a full-on brute. In fact, he uses like pressure point-based combat skills, which has not been done in a while in comic books. And it's something that I miss. I want to see heroes capable of fighting, who know how to use certain skills, and without it being overly brutish. Which brings me to the general idea of what I had for Tao. His character is going to be also educating all the other characters in martial art combat. Yep. And um, Tao is... When I came up with a design for him, it was... I took inspiration from a movie that we totally adore. It was a great movie. It, it was like a comeback for martial arts, I think. It was Shang-Chi. just... Shang-Chi. Yeah, Shang-Chi. That was... However, when I saw that, I was just thinking... Um, how could I make this original? So I stripped it of the dragon aspect of the cloth, the design, made it a bit more down to earth, more mortal, normal. Mind you, we didn't take away every dragon aspect. He still has a scaly appearance yeah, on he, certain he, aspects. He has scaly appearance on the um, the, the types, uh, the mesh weave. Yes. What's the, what's the other term that's used for that <sighs> mesh weave? There, there's another form. I forgot what people call it. Fiber, microfibers, or how? No, it? no, there was a different type of art form. To describe it, whatever, just gonna use mesh weave, and it, um, it just added a certain detail to it that gave it a unique look, but still separated very clearly, very clearly separated from the show or the movie and even the comic books. If you've seen the comic books of Shang Chi, they are vastly different from the movie, and character wise, he is very different. Oh yeah, but the art style, we wanted him to look. Like the old, some of the, to have the feel of some of the old 80s style, you know, martial artist films while still having a very modern feel to it. It's kind of, I don't know, his design, I don't, he came up, my brother came up with a good design for it and it worked. And all I did was translate it to a comic book format. And another inspiration I took for it, for the mask, for that I took um, inspiration from uh, a com combination of two things. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. For the uh, the white eyes, the 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 silhouetted white eye comic book, which I love when comic books do that when they have the white eyes, they don't show the eyes. Yes. And it's not some visor that's on there. It's just it's just white eyes because white eyes. <laughs> yes. It just because it pops, it highlights the mask more, and make it gives it a definition. It it just has a look that works. And then there's also the intensity of it. Yes. The other inspiration I took for the mask was the, um, the uh, what's his name? Uh, Daredevil from the, 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 the Netflix series of Daredevil. 
During the first season, he had this this black mask that covered up his whole face. For Tao, it doesn't cover up the whole face. Again, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And it just covers up the, the scalp, for the most part. No, I think actually in the show, it didn't cover up his mouth. It just, oh, co- yeah, it just no, covered it, up his eyes. Yeah, it just covered up his eyes. It covered up his whole head on top, just like with ours, except his had no eyes. It was like he could put on any any black fabric thing, easy to replace. It so was, yeah, it was a, a mixture of... Ta- of uh, for Tao, it was a mixture of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Daredevil. Yeah. I mean, it's honestly a good I design. I kind of think of it, his personality, too. Teenage Mutant, Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Daredevil. But when we were creating the characters, each one has a unique look. And at first, I was worried because when we created Velocity and Nexus, they both wear blue... And it was at first very clear that they looked too similar. And I was like, what is, is Velocity Nexus's sidekick? What it was like he, I mean, granted, the characters, they're going to be working very close at hand with each other throughout the comic books as they progress and, and story. But um, generally speaking, the characters, Velocity, he looks up to Nexus because he's known him as a scientist. And it, it's going to become more apparent as we write the comics. But the character, when it comes to the design, because of the new design that my brother came up with for Velocity, it actually creates a very clear de- uh, definition between the two characters. Velocity's colors are more black than he, it is blue. There's more black than blue in and it's it. It's to signify how much more mortal he is, so it has to has to take away from the, uh, the color aspect that ne- Nexus has, where it's more blue to signify all the... Uh, the power, the aura that he has around him, the the heroic nature, the greatness. Yeah. And it, the, the blue makes that highlighted. And the white just ha- just has, it just adds a little bit more pop. His, his colors are more black and white. I mean, Velocity's colors are more black and blue and silver. He has three colors, whereas Nexus is just two colors, blue and white. And it's mostly because he the only other color that really pops on him are his green eyes. And it's really... Because of the fact that we don't want to, we don't want him to have too many colors. It's supposed to be simplistic, and because of the fact that the aura that he has has a lot more color too, that it adds to his character's color scheme. It's kind of pointless to have three colors, and so when we we're creating each character, we wanted it to look a certain way. But for now, we're done talking about all that. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed our discussion into what we're hoping to create as we go. Um, If you like our video, hit that thumbs up button. Also, be sure to subscribe. And that's all. Yeah, pretty much. Goodbye. Goodbye.